Hey friends. So a question that keeps coming up in conversations that I'm having at the moment is, what do I do when my partner is not on board with the changes that I'm trying to make for fertility? And I completely understand how frustrating this can feel. If you are making all the changes, doing all the things, and your partner is continuing on as normal, it can feel really frustrating and like, it's not the two of you in it together, it's you trying to do all the things and they're just kind of along for the ride. And this can cause a lot of conflict in relationships, especially around trying to conceive because it's such an emotional issue and it really does start to feel like you're in this alone. So I wanna start by saying it's really important that we don't undervalue the importance of our partner in this. When we're talking sperm and egg, it really is a 50-50 split in how those genetics come together to make a baby. So if you are making all the changes we know that science tells us, help with our fertility, help with our egg quality, and your partner is not doing the same in relation to improving sperm quality, then it can affect how long it takes you to conceive, whether you experience miscarriage, etc. And I too am guilty here on this channel of really putting the emphasis on the female. And the reason for that is because that's my experience. I don't have any experience being a man trying to conceive and I don't pretend to truly understand how a man feels in that process. So I guess I don't talk from that experience. I can only talk from my own experience and that's the place I share from. But I really wanna make the point that it is a 50-50 split because I think sometimes we as women put all of the emphasis on myself. I am definitely guilty of that through my miscarriages. I thought it was me, I thought it was my body, and I really didn't give any credit to the fact that there was another 50% there that I had absolutely no control over. So I just wanna recognize before I get started that if I've ever made you feel in the past that the emphasis should be on the woman, that is not my intention. It's just that I share videos from my experience and I don't have that experience from the other side. So the first thing I'd like you to think about if you're experiencing a little bit of conflict in your relationship or maybe even a little bit of resentment towards your partner if they're not making the same sort of changes as you, as look at this as an opportunity to sort these issues out before you have a newborn, before you become parents. I know for me, we've had some really difficult conversations around parenting styles, just around our values in general. It really has been choices around our children, around our babies that have brought up these conversations. So whilst it might feel really unfair that you're going through this experience, that you're not able to conceive, and that maybe you're thinking, we haven't even got a baby yet and we're already struggling, how could this possibly work? I want you to flip that perspective a little and be like, there's a gift in this experience in that before we get to the part where we're pregnant, before we get to the part where we're knee deep in babies and toddlers and all of that, we can spend the time to get this part right, to get our values aligned, to get really on the same page when it comes to parenting. And it does start with conception. If you are struggling to conceive, you do need to find a way to get on the same page around the changes that you make when you're trying to conceive. And no, that's not necessarily doing everything to the letter 100% perfect. I have another video on trying to aim for perfection when you're trying to conceive. Please go and check that one out. If you are feeling like you need to do it perfect and your partner needs to do the same because that's not how relationships work. It has to be a compromise. So see this conflict, see this resentment that might be building as an opportunity to start unpacking how you both feel about parenting, how you both feel about conceiving, about babies, all of the things, what you envision your family will look like, how you will have to change as individuals and as a couple in order to have a family, all of these things that when it's easy to conceive, we get to wash over, get straight to the fun part, fall pregnant, and then, during pregnancy and potentially when you have a newborn, you're left unpacking these issues. So if you are having a little bit of conflict now, try and see it as a positive and take the steps to get on the same page together. The biggest thing I have to recommend though is putting the effort in to stay connected outside of trying to create your family. It's so easy to get blindsided, to get so focused on conceiving a baby doing all the right things that you forget about living your fun life in a relationship, in a partnership, and putting that energy into you as a couple. Even putting energy into you as a person, which has to come first before as a couple. And I know from a lot of the women I work with, and even in my own experience, sometimes the partner ends up feeling really left out of the experience because it does feel like it mostly happens in the woman's body and that their part is seemingly quite small to play and they feel quite left out of the whole experience and the focus becomes on the baby who doesn't even exist yet and all the attention and love and care that you probably used to show 
and give to your partner starts to move in another direction. And this is obviously a big thing we need to work out once we have a baby, but you need to still be able to prioritize that initial relationship. After all, if you're trying to create a family, it comes from that initial relationship. And by putting that energy into that relationship, keeping that connection strong, you will probably find that your partner is more willing to be in this team with you and be on this path to conceiving the baby and making the changes that need to happen instead of feeling like, they have to do this because they're being told to do it. You don't want to lose the fun out of the relationship and the fun out of trying, even when trying to conceive becomes a little bit more challenging than it is for everybody else. One thing that I really recommend for couples who are struggling is please go and seek some counseling. Just having a person who can sit outside the emotion and who can be the translator between the two of you can be really helpful. I know for me, when I'm really in the emotion of something and I'm trying to communicate, Sometimes what I communicate doesn't land in the way that I am intending. And in the same instance, sometimes what I am hearing, because I am so emotional, I don't hear it in the way that it was delivered. It's like we look for what we're expecting to see instead of actually listening. And a counselor is really helpful in helping you to actually listen, helping to ask the right questions of the person who's trying to communicate so they can get their message across properly and helping the person who is listening to really hear what is being said, not just what they're looking for. And when you're in a really negative place, so for instance, I was working with this couple recently who were really struggling, the partner was really resistant to making any changes, the woman had done so much, was doing everything she could, and she was feeling really resentful of her partner who was refusing basically to do anything, to change any sort of diet, to cut down on alcohol, any changes at all. And what happened was after seeing a counselor for a couple of months, they were able to come to a more middle ground where he was able to express that he was really feeling left out of the whole experience and he didn't want to and didn't really know how to get on board with the changes. And she was able to come to a place where there was less pressure on making everything perfect and more about just trying their best together. And they were sort of able to find this beautiful middle ground that they possibly wouldn't have been able to find if it weren't for the counselor being that mediator in the middle and helping them to get their voices heard. So if you are really struggling, please, please, please find a counselor, find someone who can work as that person in the middle to help you come together rather than continuing to fight and push and struggle. It should never feel like you're trying to drag someone along with you. That's never going to work. We can't force someone to make changes. All we can do is be the supportive partner and try and communicate what is important to us and what we are struggling with and hope that they are on board, which in a good relationship, most partners are. They genuinely want the best for their partner, especially when you're trying to start a family. That usually comes from a really good place in a relationship, lots of love, wanting to extend that love out into children. And then the final piece of advice I have for you is to really focus your energy on yourself. And that doesn't mean forgetting about your partner and forgetting about investing in your relationship. But what I mean is, Focus on the changes you can make. Don't criticize about the changes they're not making. Start with you. Sometimes I see criticism coming up in a relationship, but it's actually about the woman herself. She knows the changes she needs to make. She's struggling to make them for whatever reason. And that can also be unpacked in a counseling session. I often work with women unpacking why they're struggling to make the changes they need to. But often what I see is a woman struggling to make the changes and instead of focusing on her, she's criticizing her partner because they're not making any changes. So it becomes, well, I'm not making any changes because you're not making any changes. So we're never gonna get anywhere and it's just this negative cycle that perpetuates. So what I mean when I say focus on you is just do the best you can, not perfection because that just breeds stress, but make the changes you can. Make one little small change today, do that for a couple of days, and then in a few days time, can you add some extra good things in? Rather than restricting yourself, add the good stuff in, drink more water, add a little bit more movement, rather than thinking, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do that. Try and make it feel like a positive, good experience. And if you're focusing on that and it's feeling good and you're feeling happy, your partner will start to see that. And usually what happens from that place is then they get curious about the changes you're making. It's like anything, you really can't drag a person to change or force them to change, but often people start to want to change when they see it happening naturally in their partner without any pressure for them to do it themselves. They get curious, oh, that's really working for you. You're looking so much better. You're feeling so much better. 
maybe that's a positive change I can make as well. So I always recommend if you're wanting to inspire your partner a little to make some changes, don't criticize, don't drag them. Definitely get into some counseling to communicate those needs accurately, but really put your energy into focusing on yourself, making positive changes, focusing on your connection with your partner and let the rest just happen. Let the stress off your shoulders. You don't have to carry the full 100% result on you. It is 50%, but you actually need to just let go of the other 50% in the essence that it's not under your control. There's only so much you can do and give yourself the grace to make those changes without the stress, without the pressure, and give your partner the same grace as well. I hope that these tips have helped. Please reach out if you have any more specific questions. You can leave them in the comments below or you can send me an email and I'll see you next time. Namaste.